Welcome to the video. What you're currently watching is why you should never, ever, ever use a blur effect to hide text. This tool is actually going through and it's brute forcing its way into guessing what the redacted text up here means. Currently, it actually has the correct guess with its best guess. It says, wow, such secrets. And this video is going to show you how to use this tool and once again, reinforce why you should never use the blur effect to hide any information you care about. To start us off, I'm gonna walk us through where this code is even from, how to install it, and then we're gonna show the tool in action like you saw earlier on in the video. So here I am on the GitHub page. It is a tool called the Unredactor. Uh, the URL I'll put in the description of this video. And you can see all of the code here is open source. The cool part, they have a little visual up here showing this program in action. It walks us through how to install it, how to start it. Then it shows us how if you don't wanna use their example text, you could actually crack your own pixelated images, right? So let's say you're trying to figure out whether or not your information is safe via a blur effect you used on a YouTube video a while back, right? You can use this tool to, to test the safety, right? And it gives this little breakdown. I will say one restriction of this tool is you do have to be pretty proficient using some sort of Photoshop GIMP tool. You're gonna have to get the offsets right. You're gonna have to be able to figure out what the block size is, right? So this code can actually do its job. What this code is doing, to explain it from a non-technical high overview, is it's basically going through letter by letter and it's brute forcing a lot of different blurring methods and it's figuring out which of those methods matches most closely the redacted text from previously. And it's then going to use what it calls a best guess to give its best guess. Now it's time to show you all how to install the tool, use the tool, and to talk about the tool. So I booted up a Ubuntu. Uh, operating system, right? Uh, I have a virtual machine I'm running that is using Ubuntu. Um, for you all, you can use other types of Linux if you want. Uh, just keep in mind that this walkthrough is going to be specific to this operating system. There might be different quirks with different OSs that I'm unaware of. Uh, but the same thing, if you're familiar with GitHub and, you know, using the Git commands, the first thing we're going to have to do is let's take this GitHub repo, right? Once again, the link will be in the description. Let's grab this copy URL, right? It's going to be under code, if we hit code, it should say clone, and we're going to take this HTTPS link. So I'm going to hit copy that little icon here to copy it to my clipboard. I'm going to go back to my VM, go back to my Ubuntu operating system, and I'm going to type in uh, git clone. I'm going to paste that link. You're going to see cloning into what's called the unredactor, right? Once again, the name of the project here. And when I type ls to list the contents of this folder, right, I'm in my documents folder right now, we will see that directory, unredactor right here. I'm going to cd into unredactor. All cd does is it changes your directory. For those who aren't used to console commands, aren't used to Linux commands here, all I've done so far is I went into my documents folder, I downloaded this directory, the unredactor directory, right, this is the code I was showing you before, and I cd'd into this directory, right, so when I type ls, to list the contents of the directory I'm currently in, you will see an exact lineup of what we see in our graphic user interface is in my command line. So now that we have this downloaded, we have all the code on my system in this folder, what do I do now? Well, if we read the readme, as you should always do, the first thing it tells us to do is do npm install. As you will probably see in a second, I do not have npm on this machine, so I will show you how to install that as well. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do sudo, right, for super user do, apt install npm, right? And as I said before, you are going to see unable to locate package. So what I need to do is I need to do sudo apt update. I'm going to let this run for a little bit. Now that it's done, I'm going to do sudo apt install npm one more time. It's going to ask me yes or no. I'm going to hit Y and hit enter. So we're going to see this uh, do its thing for a little bit. So stay tuned. And now that it's completed, the last couple steps we have to do to actually get this tool off the ground, as we see in the readme, is we have to do npm install while in the directory and then npm start. So once again, I'm in the unredactor directory right now. I'm going to type in npm install and hit enter. It's going to do some fun stuff for a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is npm start. As 
as you can probably tell from the GIF that I was showing of all the Windows errors, and then also this screenshot right here, I ran into an error after running npm start. I'm going to show you all how to debug it. I like walking through this just in case you all run into similar issues. After copying and pasting the error message word for word and throwing it into Google, I got a stack overflow link, which was ultimately my answer. It basically was telling me I had a CD into a nodes modules electron directory. And then after that, I had to go into that directory and do node space install.js. Once that installed, I CD back into the parent directory. I CD back one more time. And now that I was back in the unredactor directory, I did the npm install once again and npm start once again. And it worked after doing that debugging step. And as we can see here, the application has popped up. All right, so after some debugging, we are now here, right? All I did to start up here was type in npm start. Now that we have the application up, I'm gonna explain how it works. So let me make this a little bit bigger, click in here. Basically the way it's working, as I said earlier on in the video, is we have a picture called redacted text. It's actually in our directory called secret.png. That's how our program knows what to decode. It has to be named that exactly. It'll give us a current guess, a best guess, all when we click start. And it's gonna to try to brute force a ton of different methods on how to decode this. So right now we see it is running, right? And then we also see as this is running, you can actually make your own redacted text, right? Down here, you can put your secret phrase, give it some offset, and then don't download it if you wanna try out different types of tests. If you wanna try out sending messages between you and your friends back and forth and decoding them and having that fun. Uh, keep in mind, right, once again, the whole point of this video is to show that using blur effects to hide text and secrets is bad. It doesn't work, uh, or at least it doesn't work very well most of the time. Um, so using this to actually hide any information is silly and defeats the whole point of the video. Uh, but it is a fun way to, you know, just send messages back and forth with friends. All right, so now it's time for us to wait for the program to do its thing. All right, so I know the program is still going through and figuring out other best guesses, but this is actually the correct text, right? It has it correct, has it right. Uh, so to explain what just happened, right? We have this redacted text and we have this brute forcing program using all of these different methods of blurring to figure out what matches the best with what we're looking at. To explain a little bit deeper into the program, now that you've seen it work, if we go into the directory itself, Basically, all you have to do, and I'll show you in the GUI, uh, so it's a little bit more user-friendly. All you have to do to use this program on an image of redacted text is you have to save that text as a PNG that you name secret.png, and the program will automatically pick up which file you want to use as long as it has this exact naming convention. Right, so every time I type in npm start to start the program, it's going to search through this directory, it's going to find secret.png, whatever image it may be, and it will try to decode it. Once again, if we look at the readme, there's a couple key steps in here, right, or, or key things to note. If you want to crack anything that wasn't generated in this program, you will have to know how to Photoshop a little bit. You're going to need to make sure you note the, bite, uh, the block size. You're going to have to crop your image down in a specific way, right? And the point of this is it isn't necessarily easy to redact or unredact, I guess, information that is blurred out. Uh, however, it is almost always possible, right? So the whole point of this tool, right, once again, is just to know that using the blur effect is not a safe way to hide your information. Thank you for joining me in this journey. I hope to see you all in the next video.